Let's start off our polynomials unit with a review of all the basic polynomial operations, the important ones, addition, subtraction, and multiplication. We'll get to division later. That one gets a little tricky. Uh, but for now, I just want to start off with this addition problem uh, that we have right here. <clears throat> and let's go through this and add up all the terms, or subtract as is appropriate. And you can see uh, there's some things that are in common, like I have an x squared term here and an x squared term here. Um, I have, let's use a different color for this, I have an x term here and another x term here. And I have uh, a sim just a simple number term in the green spots. So what you do when you're adding or subtracting polynomials is you just group things together according to the terms. So if you look here, we've got 5x squared and minus a negative 5x squared. Now if you remember minus and negative, those cancel out. It's like you're putting the two negative signs together. Here's one, there's the other. It makes a plus sign. So we're going to actually add 5x squared plus another 5x squared. So that's going to be 10x squared. And then when we get to the x's, we've got a minus 3x right here. And remember, it's minus a positive 4x. So that's minus 4x. So that becomes minus 7x. And it's a 1 minus a negative 2 by the same logic. So that's 1 plus 2. That becomes uh, 3. So we get 3. And that would be your, your final answer. You simply group together the terms, and you have to pay close attention to this minus sign. That minus sign in front of a parentheses can mess up a lot of people. So here's another example. In this one, we're distributing multiplication through the parentheses. Um, a lot of people just call it the distributive method. So negative 2x times negative 2x squared times negative 4x squared becomes positive 8. That's negative 2 times negative 4. And then the x squared times the x squared makes x to the fourth, right? You add up the exponents. Now let's do this next one. Um, negative 2x squared times f positive 5x. Well, negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. And x squared times x is x cubed. You add up the exponents. And last one here, uh, negative 2x squared times positive 3 simply makes negative 6x squared. Okay, and we're done with that one. Now, as you start getting into um, more complicated problems, sometimes they actually get smaller, like this one. We have to do a technique here called foiling. Um, and if you remember what foiling stands for, it's spelled this way, F-O-I-L. That's <clears throat> first uh, outer, inner, and last. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's rewrite this as negative 4x plus 5, and it's squared. So what that means is you multiply it by itself, negative 4x plus 5. And here's what I mean by first, outer, inner, last. The first terms are negative 4x times negative 4x. That's 16x squared. The outer terms are these two, negative 4x times positive 5. So that's negative 20x. The inner terms are these two. That's positive 5 times negative 4x. That's another negative 20x. And then the last terms are the ones at the end, the rightmost terms. That's a positive 25. So now, we're not quite done yet. We've distributed all the multiplication, but we still need to combine some like terms. And there's just a little bit to do there. These middle terms can group together. Minus 40x plus 25. And this would be uh, the polynomial in standard form as opposed to factored form. Okay. Now, there is another method for multiplying polynomials, and I want to go over this quickly. This is called the box method. And the whole reason this exists is just to help you keep track of multiplications that are a little bit lengthy. Like this one has a trinomial times a trinomial. So we're going to have a lot of terms. And if you try to use the rainbow method up here or the foiling method, that's going to be a lot of arrows, a lot of things to keep track of. And you can do it that way if you like. That's fine. But this method also exists. So I just want to show it to you, get everyone comfortable with the idea. If you look at what I've done here, I've taken 3x squared, negative 5x, and negative 1, and put those here. And the other terms of the other polynomial, 4x squared, negative 3x, and negative 4, are all down here. And the way we're going to track this multiplication is by just carrying through one term at a time. So 3x squared times 4x squared makes 12x to the fourth. Negative 5x times 4x squared makes negative 20x cubed. Negative 1 times negative times 4x squared is negative 4x 
squared. And you can keep on going down the, the line here. I won't talk through it. You just follow along uh, with what I'm writing here. And the purpose is once we finish writing all of these terms, we're going to be able to quickly add this up, uh, relatively quickly. Right? It still takes a little bit of work. And positive four, I think that's our last one. So now what we do, once you've filled in the table, is you simply go through and you add up all the terms, all the like terms. And let's use purple for this. So I'm gonna start with, um, let's start with this guy, 12 x to the fourth. And remember, these are like terms. So next we'll do these guys, the x cubes. So that's gonna be minus 29 x cubed. And what's our next like term? Hope I don't run out of colors here. We've got x squareds for the oranges. So that'll be, well, let's see. Negative 12 plus 15 is positive 3. Minus 4 is negative 1. So that's minus x squared. And what color is left here? How about brown? 20x plus 3x will give me 23x. And the very last term here at the end, who haven't I used yet? obnoxious green. That's a positive four, okay? So that's how you use the box method. It can usually make this a lot easier to keep track of, uh, especially if you have um, a trinomial times a trinomial or even more terms. Uh, this is probably what you'd want to do, but I don't break this out when you have simple polynomials like uh, two terms times two terms. Those are pretty easy to keep track of.